The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Typebond. So a couple months ago, I did an ad for Carbon Method. It's a graphene coating that's supposed to protect your tools from rust better than just about anything else out there. I applied this stuff to my table saw and I told you that I'd report back. I honestly expected it to be a slam dunk. We'd move to Missouri, the stuff would get exposed to humidity, and I'd be able to say, look, everybody, no rust. And unfortunately, that's not what happened. When I finally had a chance to look at my tools, I noticed that the table saw had tiny little rust spots all over the surface. So I tried to think about what happened during the move, and then I remembered that when we were moving some of the tools, we had a little bit of intermittent drizzle. It was off and on, and I was busy with a family, two dogs, and moving a bunch of house stuff that I really didn't think too much about it. If my head was on straight at the time, I certainly would have just grabbed a paper towel and wiped up the excess water. So the tools sat in an insanely hot and humid garage for about two months, and this is the result. I've got a bunch of little tiny areas. They're really difficult to see, but you can definitely feel it with your hands. Just little spots of rust all the way around the top here. Some are bigger than others. Maybe you could even hear this. But the good thing is the main portion, like just in general, the cast iron is in great shape. So in terms of ambient humidity making rust happen, that's not really what we're seeing here. We're just seeing these little droplets and those little tiny spots of rust. Now it's one thing for me to say, hey, look, this cast iron looks pretty good. It didn't get affected by the ambient humidity, but let me show you what happened to a tool that was completely unprotected. My drill press has never been treated with anything but the occasional waxing in Denver. And as you can see, lots of rust. And this has had zero contact with water. This is just from ambient humidity. So why did this happen? Well, you probably know that in order for rust to form, we need three things. We need moisture, we need oxygen, and we need iron. In my first torture test back in Denver, I folded a wet washcloth and placed it on the table, which seemed like a good test at the time, but in fact it wasn't. While a wet cloth does put water on the surface, it also does a pretty good job of blocking air from reaching the surface. So when we see tests like a melting ice cube or we see a sweating cold ice water glass that's leaving a ring, and then they just kind of pick the glass up and then wipe off the excess water, well, of course there's gonna be no rust in that situation because there wasn't enough exposure to air. The real stress test here is evaporation. If you allow the water to sit on the surface and naturally evaporate, it gets plenty of exposure to oxygen in the air. You have the iron in the material and of course the water as it's slowly evaporating off the surface. That's what we need to look at. So when I saw this result, obviously the first thing I did was contact Carbon Method to get their thoughts on it. So they ended up doing their own in-house tests using different kinds of water, including well water, tap water, and special highly filtered water and they all produced different results. Tap water produced some rust, but the filtered water didn't rust at all, and actually the well water did pretty good too without a lot of active rust. You see, things like salt and acidity, these will impact how fast rust develops. So when we think about rain, which the conditions might depend on the day or where you are, there certainly could have been more acid in that. So tiny droplets could have penetrated the carbon coat finish and gotten to the iron. So after talking with Carbon Method, there's one thing I need to make perfectly clear, is that this material is not really intended to protect against standing water. Now, depending on the purity of that water, it may or may not rust. But really, that's not what we're talking about here. We're trying to protect our tools from ambient humidity, not standing water. And realistically, most of us, if we spill something or we see some kind of standing water, if our heads are on straight, we're going to clean that water up and make sure it's nice and dry. Ambient humidity is really the question here. So with all that said, I still didn't feel comfortable making a final recommendation on this product. I needed more information. Look, the folks at Carbon Method are super nice, but my obligation to my audience is more important to me. And in order for me to give you guys a thumbs up on a product, I need to be absolutely sure that it does what they say it's going to do. The problem is I don't really have the luxury of time. The real test here is put it on the tools and then wait a year and report back. I, I just don't want to wait that long to give you guys this information. So I devised a very quick and simple little test, and it's time for some spag science. Jason's buddy Aaron hooked us up with some small pieces of steel from an old lawnmower blade. We then sanded them up, cleaned up the pitting as much as possible, and they're not perfect, but this should help us see some rust development. I left one sample raw, the second sample got a couple of coats of Renaissance wax, The next piece received a coat of T9 Bow Shield, plus a coat of wax, 
And the final piece received carbon coat. So I just wanted to jump in here real quick to let you guys know about a new project course we have coming to the Guild with Caleb James. It's awesome, and let's have Caleb tell you about it. Hi, I'm Caleb James, and welcome to my shop. We're gonna be building a Danish cord bench. And I think that this bench is a really great place to start learning Danish modern furniture construction. A few of the things that we're gonna focus on in this project is a wood selection that's appropriate for chair making. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of the joinery that is really strong, even in these kind of compact areas that you often need for chair, bench, construction, things like that. And then of course, we're gonna dive into how to weave with Danish paper cord. If we're going to be doing a flat weave on this particular bench, it's very achievable even if you don't have much experience in weaving. I'm really excited to show you these processes and I think you're really going to grow as a woodworker once you learn some of these new skills. Now this is on pre-order. The project releases on December 9th and you have until December 9th to get it for the special pre-order price. So head to woodwhisperguild.com for more information. Now keep in mind, this test, as always with my test, is not meant to be exhaustive, but I did want to use products that I've used on my tools in the past so that I have a solid frame of reference to judge the results. I then took the samples and put them in a plastic tote with a bowl of water and a hygrometer so I could monitor the humidity. I made the water hot just to help kick the process off, and my meter jumped to 99%, pretty much stayed there for the entire duration. After about 12 days, I got tired of waiting. Even though I began to see some rust, I wanted to do something to push this test along, so I put a little drop of water at the center of each piece and replaced the lid. Now remember, we need those droplets to evaporate in order to really test out what's happening, but look what happened overnight. I can't really explain why, but the only piece that showed any surface rust from this overnight droplet was the piece with wax, just the wax only. So maybe some big brain can tell me why that happened. I have no idea. But at that point, I needed the evaporation to occur, so I left the lid off for another 24 hours, and here are the results. Here's the raw sample, and you can see we've got some of that pitting that's turning into rust. You could definitely feel it raised above the surface. And that droplet in the middle, clearly we've got some rust development there too. Now here's the wax only, side by side with the raw piece. You can see it's definitely got less pitting. There's still a little bit of it, but it's a lot less. As far as that little droplet in the middle there, there's plenty of rust going on there. And remember, this is the one that kind of mysteriously showed rust even prior to full evaporation. But the wax definitely does offer some protection from ambient humidity. Here's the piece that was treated with T9 first and then a little bit of wax, and you can see even less rust pitting. And also, if you look at that spot in the middle, it just looks like more light surface rust that with a quick buffing would probably go away. You see a little bit more of a deeper, darker red rust that's happening on those other pieces. So far, this is sort of what you would expect with this test to see a little bit more protection from rust from the T9 Bow Shield product. And finally, this is the carbon coat piece. I mean, there's really no noticeable pitting the little dark spots that I see are the ones that were there when we freshly sanded them that we couldn't sand. Well, I guess we could have sanded longer, but they're there and they were there this whole time. But nothing in terms of uh, general rust growth from humidity and even that little droplet right there, which the water was my well water at home, there's really nothing to speak of on this sample. So this whole experience gave me three takeaways. Number one, don't let water sit on your tools, duh. Number two, carbon coat does work better than the other two methods that I've tried in the past. Now there will be potentially more tests using other products on the market. I don't know that that's necessarily for me to do. It's something you could certainly investigate. But at this point, that test has absolutely built my faith in the product. And if I'm gonna choose one to protect my tools long-term, it's definitely gonna be the carbon method carbon coat. And number three, even though this product isn't designed to protect your tools from standing water, Clearly in the case of some water, uh, again, at my house, it's well water that's also been filtered. The only one to not show a rust spot was the carbon coated piece. All the other ones did. And of course, with the rain, I still got spotting. And that was probably rain with a little bit of acid and who knows what other salts and minerals were in there. So again, the water composition makes a big difference. But the take home is that you really shouldn't leave water on your cast iron tools just in case. So while this is obviously just one isolated test, there's a whole lot more we can do. I do feel confident enough recommending and following through with that first ad to let you guys know that this product does work better than the other things that I have used in the past. So it does get my thumbs up and a recommendation, and I'm gonna be putting it on all of my cast iron here in the shop. 
The real test starts now. I would just wanna see long-term because one thing we're not addressing with this is usage. The tools don't just sit here, they get used. Stuff rubs across them. How well does that protection fare compared to other things? That's something I'm gonna to have to test with time. So maybe check back with me in a year, but at least now I've seen enough to say, yeah, this is definitely a good product. It works as advertised and I'm ready to put it on all of the potentially rusting tools and things in the shop. All my cast iron is gonna get this stuff. So hopefully this answers the question for you guys. And I'm sorry I had to put so much additional explanation in there, but I take this stuff very seriously when I make a product recommendation. And it was risky for me to do an ad and tie it into an unknown. But here we are, and I kind of stuck my foot in my mouth with that process, but I was glad to finally get to a point that I could report the results to you guys and allow you to make a decision for yourself. All right, thanks for watching. Sloth, love chunk, rocky row. So why did this happen? Well, we... Shut up, Jason. Hell <laughs> it. put spag on everything. <laughs>